Oh, hey guys, how we doing out there? Um, I am, what the heck are these things? Mini, the mini, I don't know how those are here. Kind of embarrassing. Put my uh, binoculars down here in the jungle and guess I'm in the, a little bit of uh, the mood to, to read a book. So we're in the jungle and we want to read a book. What book should we read? How about the Jungle Book? No, wait a minute. Here it is, the Jungle Book. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Once upon a time in the jungle, the night song of the jungle goes like this. Now chill the, <clears throat> the kite brings home the night that Mang the bats sets free. The herds are shut and burn and hut or lose till dawn are we. This is the hour of pride and power, talon and tush and claw. Oh, hear the call, good hunting all that keep the jungle law. It was seven o'clock on a very warm evening in the sea Oni hills where Father Wolf woke up from his day's rest, scratching himself, yawned and spread out his paws one after another. To get rid of the sleepy feeling in his in his, in their tips, Mother Wolf lay but, uh, with her big gray nose drooped across her four tumbling, squealing cubs, and the moon shone into the mouth of the cave where they all lived. <laughs> Said Father Wolf, "It is time to hunt again," and he was going to spring down the hill when a little shadow with a bushy tail crossed the threshold and wide. "Good luck, go with you." O oh, chief of the wolves, and good luck, and strong white teeth go with noble children that they may never forget the hungry in this world. It was the jackal, Tabokai, Tabokai, the dish licker, the wolf, the wolves of, of India despise Tabokai. They do not like this Tabokai jackal. Because he runs about making mischief and telling tales and eating rags and pieces of leather from the village rubbish heaps. But they are afraid of him too because Tabokai, more than anyone else in the jungle, is apt to go mad. And they forget that he was ever afraid of anyone and runs through the forest, biting everything in his way. Even the tigers run and hide. When little Tabokai goes mad, for madness is the most disgraceful thing that can overtake a wild creature. We call it hydrophobia, but they call it Dewanai, madness and run. Picture. See? Father Wolf, Chief of the Wolves, getting ready to go out there and hunt. It says, Good luck go with you, Chief of Wolves, with Mama Wolf and all the cubs back there inside of their den cave. Enter then and, uh, then and look, said Father Wolf stiffly, but there is no food here. For Wolf, no, said Tabakai, but, so, but for so mean a person as myself, a dry bone is a good feast. Who are we? The Giddor Log, the Jackal people, those bad people? Uh, how is he described? The... Um, sinister was the word? We don't like those jackal people. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there's no food to go to pick and choose. He scuttled to the back of the cave where he found the bone of a buck with some meat on it and sat cracking the end merrily. Oh, thanks for the good meal, he said, licking his lips. How beautiful are the noble children. How large are their eyes, and so young, too. Indeed, indeed, I might have remembered that the children of kings are men from the beginning. Now, Tabukai knew as well as anyone else that there is nothing so unlucky as to compliment children to their faces. It pleased him to see father and mother wolf looking uncomfortable. This jackal cat, I don't know if, he'd, uh, if I'd really like to run into this guy. Tabokai sat still rejoicing in the mischief that he had made and then said spitefully or in a mean way, Shere Khan, the big one, has shifted his hunting rounds. He will hunt among these hills for the next moon. 
So he has told me Shere Khan was a tiger who lived near the Wangunga River 20 miles away. He has no rights, Father Wolf began angrily. By the law of the jungle, he has no right to change his quarters without due warning. He will frighten every head of game within 10 miles, and I, I have to kill for two these days. His mother did not call him Lungri, the lame one, for nothing, said Mother Wolf quietly. He has been lame in one foot, lame, hurt in one foot, since birth. That is why he has only killed cattle, or cows, because maybe because they're slow. And now the villagers of the Wayne Gunga are angry with him, and he has come here and to, to make our villagers angry. They will scour the jungle for him when he is far away. And we and our children must run when the grass is set alight. Indeed, we are very grateful to Shere Khan. Shall I tell him of your gratitude? Said Tobukai. Out, snapped Father Wolf. Out and hunt with, the, with, the, with thy master. Thou hast done, done harm enough for one night. I go, says Tubble Kai quietly. Ye can hear Sh Shere Khan below in the thickets. I might have saved myself the myself the message. Father Wolf listened, and below in the valley there ran down a, a little river. He heard the dry, angry, snarling sing song. Whine of a tiger who has caught nothing and does not care if all the jungle even knows it. The fool, said Father Wolf, to begin a night's work with that noise. Does he think that our buck are like his fat wine gunga bullocks? Shish. It's, not, it's neither bullocks nor buck he hunts tonight, said Mother Wolf. It's a man. The wine then chanced, <clears throat> changed to a sort of humming purr that seemed to come from every quarter of the compass. It was the noise that bewilders woodcutters, gypsies, sleeping in the open, and makes them run sometimes into the very mouth of the tiger. Man, said Father Wolf. Man, said Father Wolf, showing all of his white teeth. Fah! There are there not enough beetles and frogs in the, in the tanks that he must eat a man? And on our ground, too, the law of the jungle, which never orders anything without reason, forbids every beast to eat man except when he is killing to show his children how to kill, and then he must hunt outside the hunting ground of his pack or tribe. The real reason for this is that man killing means, sooner or later, the arrival of white men on elephants with guns and hundreds of brown men with gongs and rockets and torches. Then everyone in the jungle suffers. The reason the beasts give uh, among themselves is that man <coughs> is the weakest and most defenseless of all living things, and, and it is unsportsmanlike to touch him. They say too, and it is true that man-eaters become mangy, not healthy as mangy, and lose their teeth. Uh, the purr grow louder and end it in the full-throated arr of the tiger's charge. And then there were there th then there was a howl, an untigerish howl from Shere Khan. He has missed, said Mother Wolf. What is it? Father Wolf ran out a few paces and heard Shere Khan mummering and, mu and mumbling. Savagely he tumbled about in the scrub. The fool has had no has had no more sense than to jump at the woodcutter's campfire. He burned his feet and the father wolf with a grunt, Tablakai is with him. Something is coming uphill, said Mother Wolf, twitching one ear. Get ready. The bushes rustled a little in the thicket, and Father Wolf dropped to his haunches under him, ready for his leap. Then, if you had, wa had been watching, you would have seen the most wonderful thing in the world. The wolf checked in mid-spring. He made his bound before he saw what it was that was jumping uh, he was jumping at and then he tried to stop himself the result was that was that he shot him up straight into the air for four or five feet landing almost where he left ground man he snapped the, the man's cub the, the, a man's cub a man's cub look 
Directly in front of him, holding on by a low branch, stood a naked brown baby who could just only walk as soft and as dimpled a little Adam as ever came to a wolf's cave at night. He looked up into Father Wolf's face and laughed. Is that a man's cub, said Mother Wolf? I have never seen one. Bring it here. A wolf accustomed to moving his own cubs can, if necessary, mouth an egg without breaking it. And though Father Wolf's jaws closed right on the child's back, not a tooth even scratched the skin as he laid it down among the cubs. How little, how naked, and how bold, said Mother Wolf softly. The baby was punching was pushing his way between the cubs to get closer to the warm hide. I, uh... He is taking his meal with the others, and so this is a man's cub now. Was there ever a wolf that could boast a man's cub among her children? I have heard now and again such a thing, but never in our pack or in, in my time, said Father Wolf, he is altogether without hair. I could kill him with a touch of my foot, but see, he looks up and, and is not afraid. Moonlight was, was blocked out by the mouth of the cave for Shere Khan's great square head and shoulders were thrust inside the entrance. Oof. Tablet Kai was behind him was squeaking, my lord, my lord, it went in here. Shere Khan does, uh, does us great honor. Uh, God, great honor, says Father Wolf. But his eyes were very angry. What does Shere Khan need, I wonder? My quarry! A man's cub went this way. Its parents have run off. Give him to me. Shere Khan jumped at the woodcutter's campfire, as Father Wolf had said, but it was fury, but it was furious from the pain of his burned foot. But Father Wolf knew that the mouth of the cave was too narrow for a tiger to come in. Even where he was, Shere Khan's shoulders and forepaws were cramped for want of room, as man's would be if he tried to fight in a barrel. Mm. Shere Khan poking his menacing face inside the cave. There. Looks like Father Wolf, Mother Wolf. Oh, look at the baby boy and probably baby wolf cubs.